Hello friends, uh, today we will start our lecture with uh, one of the very important test uh, used in uh, evaluating mechanical properties and that is tensile test. Okay, so we have already introduced uh, you to the stress and strain okay. and then we discussed about the elastic part of the elastic behavior of the material. Okay. So, when we, we go to this tensile test and uh, we will see that how what kind of uh, information you get from these, okay, you will understand that uh, whatever we discussed there is again coming back here and it is ki kind of getting integrated and uh, you will be start appreciating that how we, we get all these uh, values from a tensile test. Okay. So, if you consider the whole mechanical properties as a as a as a whole that what type of mechanical properties are usually of interest to us there are two colors i have used here okay one is this uh, dark brown and one is blue okay so the 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 first part okay properties mentioned in the first part okay basically so these ones, uh, these are you are going to get from a typical tensile test or tension test. Okay. So, this is what you will get from a tension test. So, your strength of the material, okay, in that you will have couple of uh, uh, strength, yield strength and ultimate tensile strength, one, two of the most important uh, strength which we have or which we need and then you have ductility, toughness and resilience. Okay. Then there is another set of properties which is mentioned here, okay, hardness, impact toughness, creep and fatigue strength. These are not part of the tensile test per se, but some of the properties actually you can get from a very similar kind of test. Okay. Hardness is of course very different, but some of the other properties actually the kind of sample or the kind of machine which you use are very similar to what you will uh, get in a tensile test. Okay. So, let us start with the tensile test first okay. and basically the idea is to understand all these properties, how I can get these properties from a from the information which I get from the tensile test. So, this is the basically the samples which you use for doing tensile test. Okay. One is if you have sheet, so if you I have sheet uh, for which I want to know the mechanical properties. So, then we have this dog bone or rectangular cross sectional area uh, uh, material uh, sample. Okay. So, basically the cross sectional area of this sample is rectangular and or if you have some kind of a bar, okay, maybe a tor steel or something like that, then we have this kind of button head with circular cross sectional area. Okay. And in this sample, there are few things which you can uh, notice. Okay, that one is what we call as the grip section. Okay, which is mentioned here. So this is uh, you can say either sometimes people refer to it as shoulder. Okay, so it is like a shoulder kind of thing. So it is either a shoulder, okay, or it is a grip section. And this is the basically either diameter or width of the grip section. Okay. This is where the machine holds the sample. Okay. So, uh, if you look at a typical tensile test machine, basically you will have some support system okay, which is mounted on a base here okay. and then there is a, 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 a unit called cross head. Okay. So, you have a cross head here. Okay, and basically uh, there will be some one is going to be stationary and another going to be moving. So, suppose if this is moving then the, there will be a stationary one in the bottom okay, and the, your sample comes here. Okay. So, suppose some arrangements will be there, I am not showing into that details. Okay. So, suppose the sample will be like this. Of course, it the drawing is not very nice here. Okay, suppose we are able to load by some pin loading. So sometime you will also see that there are there is a hole here in the sample. 
So you can insert a pin and that is how you are load, going to load the sample. Now this cross head is going to move, this is going to apply a strain on the material and the response of the material will be in form of stress and for measuring the stress there is a uh, part of this machine which is called load cell. Okay. So load cell will measure the stress uh, uh, of the material which is basically the response of the material to the strain which we are imposing on that. Okay. And now you can understand that I can move this cross head with different velocity v. Okay. So if I am doing with at a faster velocity then I am doing at a the deformation at a faster rate, if I am moving at a slower speed then I am doing the deformation at a slower rate. Okay. So there can be different uh, rates also I can apply to that. Okay. So this is how a typical tensile testing machine will be. So basically the uh, machine is going to grip the sample in this region. Okay. There can be different methods to grip. One as I told you that you can have holes in the sample and you can insert a pin and then it will be called as pin loading. In some cases you have some kind of uh, 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 gripping section, it is like a clutch kind of thing which you see in automobile that you uh, have to have some friction which and you have to have a normal force okay, which grips the sample. The, now one of the most important part of this sample is what we call as the gauge length okay, which is mentioned here okay, between two points and there we have also reduced the cross sectional area of the sample. Okay. So the idea is to reduce the cross sectional area of the sample such that the, the this part of the sample will experience more stress because the cross sectional area is reduced. So the deformation will be concentrated in this part and the shoulder part is what we are saying that it should not deform normally. Okay. So by reducing the cross sectional area, so I am saying I am assuming that now the deformation will be concentrated in the gauge section only okay. and there will be a gauge length okay, which you can call as something like L0 for argument sake and then you will have some diameter or width if diameter if it is a uh, round cross section, a uh, circular cross section and width if it is a rectangular cross section okay. and this is the distance between the shoulder. Okay. One more important thing you will see here is that when we are reducing the cross section we are not doing the reduction like this for example. One way to do that is I can reduce the cross sectional like this also. Okay. But this kind of uh, very sharp corner is going to introduce stress concentration in the material. This we will see later on when we will discuss fracture okay. and your material will fail at this root itself. Okay. So you are not going to get the representative property of the material but just some uh, kind of a fracture property of the material because you have a sharp corner here. So you have to have some kind of curvature here. Okay, and the whole standard that how you can prepare this sample is given in again ASTM standard American Society for Testing and Materials okay, and the standard name is E8. Okay. So you can go through that and uh, make your sample accordingly. So this is what a typical tensile curve will look like. Okay. So this on the y axis you have a stress, on x axis you have a strain. Okay, so strain is what you are imposing on the material and stress is your response of the material. So you will have some linear part okay, which is uh, what we are going to call as where the elastic deformation is going to take place and Hooke's law will be obeyed. This is already we have discussed. So this is uh, I think the this circle has gone little bit too far. Okay. Actually it should have been some up to here only this actually should be down. So uh, your elastic part will be up to somewhere here okay, and then your material will start going into a non-linear kind of dependence of stress into with the strain okay, and that is where we call it as that material has now started deforming irreversibly or there will be a plastic deformation. Okay, so th uh, this is I will come back to this again that why we are plotting this line here okay. and this is where you will get a, a, 
uh, uniform plastic deformation. So, after yield point, so yield will be where your material started showing the plastic deformation. Okay. So, after that you will have a plastic deformation In that also we are dividing this deformation into two parts one is which is what we are calling as uniform plastic deformation. So, during this time if you see these two samples here okay, this is where initially when the elastic deformation was there then you can see that the cross sectional area has reduced from here to here and the length has increased. But the cross sectional reduction in the sample is uniform throughout the sample, okay. same cross sectional area is there throughout the sample. So, in this right now in this case the plastic deformation is uniform throughout the gauge length okay, during from yield point to where we reach the maximum stress in this stress strain curve and that maximum stress is called ultimate tensile strength. And after that you see start seeing that there is a drop in the tensile curve or material is showing that there is it cannot take the load and there you get the non-uniform uh, plastic deformation. And so, now you can see in the gauge length ok, so this was the initial uh, this was the cross sectional area before the necking and now th there is a phenomena called necking which has started. So, it look like a neck, so they are call it necking. So, at this point okay, in your sample necking starts okay. and that is why we are calling this as that now there is a non-uniform plastic deformation that means the deformation will be concentrated only in this region where the cross sectional area is reduced. And since now the cross sectional area is reduced my material cannot take uh, the, the response of the material will be reduced because I have less amount of material to give the resistance to deformation. Okay. So, now my cross sectional area is reduced. So, my uh, material what response it is going to get is also going to be reduced okay. and that is why you will see that the stress is coming down. Now, uh, the, when we say that uh, this again we will come back to this uh, discussion when we will discuss about two different type of calculation one is what we call as engineering stress and another what we call as uh, true stress. Okay. So, there you will again start appreciating that uh, we, we can have different type of calculation to get the tensile uh, stress strain curve. Okay. And at, at this point my material will fracture into two parts. Okay, so, now there is uh, no resistance to deformation okay, because now they, there is no connection between the two material they are independent. So, at this point it has fractured and now my stress strain curve will also stop here and this is where the uh, I will call it as uh, the material is fractured okay, and this is the total strain which material is taken. Okay. So, now before going further. Okay, I want to discuss two very important uh, type of stress strain curve. Okay, so, one which you can see in an aluminum material, aluminum uh, material okay, or in one which you can see in steel plain carbon steel or mild steel. Okay. So, uh, because these two are very important uh, distinctions. Okay, so, let me draw it. So, this is my strain and this is my stress. So, one we have already seen, okay. so one which is like this, so you have elastic part, okay. then somewhere the yielding will take place and the plastic part and you have fracture at somewhere here. Okay. So, this is one type of curve. Okay. Now, the problem in this particular curve is that you have a linear elastic part and then non-linear plastic part, but where this transition takes place I am not sure about that point where the yielding in the material has started. Okay. So, to find out the yield strength or yield point in this kind of stress strain curve, okay, what we do is we take a offset on the strain okay, and this offset is equal to 0.2 percent or 0.002 strain to total in fraction. Okay. So, you take an offset of 0.2 percent strain and then you have to plot a line which is parallel to the 
this linear curve with the elastic part of the uh, this po elastic portion of this stress strain curve and wherever it is cutting the stress strain curve that I will call as my yield strength. Okay. Because I am not sure where this linearity and non-linearity is going, so I will call it as uh, or you sometime call it as 0.2 percent or off offset yield strength or 0.2 percent proof stress, okay. there are different names for this. So, this is how you get if you are not sure about it. In steel or mild steel or plain carbon steel, this is a even simpler, okay. the stress strain curve for that is usually like this. So, you have elastic part okay, and at some point the yielding starts and actually the stress strain curve drops and then there is kind of some kind of serrations are there and then it start becoming like this and then it fractures. Okay. So, very different curve form from what you will see in aluminum uh, alloys, okay. uh, not all alloys in some alloys. Okay or in different materials you will see diff this type of curve, in some material you will see this type of curve where you will see a very sharp yield point. So, in this case defining a yield strength is very easy. So, wherever you get this maximum strength and then there is a very sharp drop. Okay. So, this is very easy to identify that th this is my yield stress. So, in case of steel we call this as the upper yield point and then there is a lower yield uh, stress. Okay, so, it drops then th there are some serrations and then it goes into plastic deformation. Okay, so, these are the two different types of stress strain curve you will see generally in books or in uh, some other places. Okay. So, this is for steel and this is for aluminum. In case of aluminum as I told you, you have to do this 0.2 percent offset and then plot a line to get the uh, yield strength. Okay. Now, this is already we have discussed elastic there will be two parts of this tensile uh, stress strain curve elastic part okay, that will be recoverable strain you will have linear dependence of stress on strain and so on and plastic deformation which is non recoverable and it will be permanent. Okay. So, now next uh, we will try to see different properties at different stages in, in stress strain curve. Okay. So, uh, so some we have already discussed earlier also that one property which you will get uh, from a stress strain curve will be elastic modulus okay which is basically slope of the linear portion of the stress strain curve then you will get the yield point okay where stress and strain curve loses linearity or non recoverable plastic deformation begins okay so that will be your yield point then you will have yield strength or offset yield strength okay as i told you that uh, in the some material where stress strain curve is a continuous curve okay you cannot find out the yield strength so what we do is we draw a parallel line to the linear relationship between stress and strain at 0.2% offset the point where this line cuts the graph of stress strain curve graph is your yield strength okay then you will have ultimate tensile strength maximum stress on the stress strain diagram after which necking starts. Okay. So, up to this point you will have uniform deformation after this you will have non-uniform deformation. In a stress strain curve it is very easy to uh, uh, easy to find out that way which is your ultimate tensile strain. So, in the stress strain curve where the slope is becoming 0 that is your uh, that is the strain at which you will have ultimate tensile strength. Then you have fracture strength, stress at which material fractures. Okay. So, very simple different location of the stress strain curve. I can get you can understand that I can get so many properties just by doing one tensile uh, test. Okay. You can get elastic modulus, you can get yield point or yield strength or you can get UTS ultimate tensile strength or you can get fracture strength. Okay. Some other properties which you can get from uh, uh, this tensile test, uh, one is uh, called ductility, okay. important for a, uh, a metallurgical engineer okay. that tells you that what is the maximum strain experienced by the material before fracture. Okay. So, basically this is the total strain 
experienced by the material before fracture. And this is another material in which case whatever is the maximum strain experienced by the material before fracture. Okay. So, I can easily tell you that the ductility of this material let us uh, call it as A here and let us call it as B here. So, ductility of A is more than ductility of B, uh, material A is more ductile. Then there are some two important properties again one is called resilience okay, and that is the energy absorbed by material. Okay, when you are deforming elastically and of course, because uh, elastic deformation is reversible, this material, uh, this energy will be dissipated during the unloading cycle. Okay. So, this is what is resilience as you can see in uh, curve A, okay, the up to this elastic part whatever is the uh, area under the curve. Okay, that will be the resilience. Okay, so it, it, this much energy the material is going to take, but because this is elastic deformation, it we can be recovered. Of course, it will be recovered in form of heat afterwards. In case of material B, the resilience is up to this point because uh, the strength is more in this yield, yield strength is more. Okay. So, you can see that uh, the resilience has increased in this material, so it, this material will be more resilient. Then another property is called toughness, the ability of material to absorb energy in the plastic range. Okay. So, this is for elastic range. So, whatever is the remaining stressed uh, area under the stress strain curve. Okay. So, for example, for this uh, material A, okay, if I uh, want to draw the sorry, it will be like this area and so on. Okay. So, this much area is uh, under the curve A, so that will be the toughness. Similarly, in case of material B, this much will be the area under the uh, curve where the plastic deformation is there. So, this much will be the toughness of the uh, material B. Okay. So, now you can see it is the area which we are comparing, in this case strength is more but ductility is less, in this case strength is less, ductility is more. Okay. So, it depends upon the area, how much area it is covering, but in general I can say from this two curve that toughness of A is more than toughness of B. The reason is that ductility of also A is more than ductility of B. Okay. And area in terms of area also you can just qualitatively say that area under this curve is more than area under this curve. So, in this particular case, the ductility of A is more than ductility of B and toughness also of A is more than toughness of B. Okay. So, it is not always true that if ductility is more the toughness will be more, it depends upon the area which is under the curve. So, in this case it looks like the area under the curve for material A will be more than the B. So, toughness of material A is more than the toughness of material B. Okay. So, this is the basically the energy material can take before fracture okay, in the plastic range. So, the ability of material to absorb energy in the plastic range and you can say before fracture. Okay. Very important in some materials. Okay. For example, if you are designing an automobile or you are uh, want to select a material for automobile, okay, how much energy it is going to take, suppose there is some kind of impact before it fails. Of course, in that case we call it as impact toughness not only toughness, okay. we will come to that later on. Then there can be different uh, behavior brittle or ductile uh, of the material. Okay. So, what do we mean by brittle fracture, uh, brittle, brittle uh, behavior or ductile behavior? Okay. In case of brittle uh, material which is showing brittle behavior, okay. so the fracture will occur almost at the elastic limit. Okay. So, it may not even see this plastic part, the fracture will take place somewhere here. Okay. If it is a completely brittle material, for example, glass. Okay. Glass is a brittle material, if you just uh, apply some stress, it will fracture into, uh, in, into parts okay. and uh, this will happen without showing you any plastic deformation, it will be under elastic part itself. Okay. 
in metals again we call some metals as bitter metal okay but in brit metals you slightly see some plasticity before fracture so it is not in metals it is not it is not going to fail in the elastic limit itself uh, some plastic deformation you will see and then it will fracture okay so it is in case of some uh, brittle metals glass uh, of course is a different class of material okay in that case you will see uh, uh, the uh, the fracture in the elastic limit itself ductile material fracture after under undergoing considerable plastic strain okay and this is what is ductile material okay so considerable plastic strain will be there or deformation will be there so uh, area under the curve will be obviously more for for the ductile material okay absorbed energy will be more so you can also say that toughness of the ductile material will be more nowadays uh, uh, in glass also lot of research is going on to make it tough okay sometime you must have seen on the windshield of the automobile toughened glass okay so they are trying to increase the toughness of the, the glass also so that it can take uh, maybe uh, if, if if something uh, some small stone or something comes and hit the windshield it should not fracture in those uh, situations okay and your uh, mobiles uh, smartphones okay all those glasses are toughened glasses okay they are very hard and very uh, they are toughened so that if you apply as accidentally if you apply some stress also uh, the idea is that it should not uh, crack okay so these are toughened glass and then they, they they are giving very specific names to them there are some very specific glasses gorilla 2 gorilla 3 and so on okay so a lot of research is going on in the improving the property of glass and making it tough problem with brittle failure is that uh, fracture is that it it is catastrophic so it doesn't give prior warning so what prior warning you can get uh, if it is not brittle is the prior warning is you can get a plastic deformation okay so suppose you have designed a structure and uh, the material you have used is brittle for example and suppose due to some unforeseen reason there is very high load uh, on your structure and you did not design it for that kind of load what will happen if it is a brittle material it will just fracture okay and uh, suppose there are uh, humans who are using that particular structure there will be lot of uh, damage to human lives but if it is a brittle material uh, sorry if it is a ductile material uh, suppose now if you put the this kind of load what will happen is that it will first deform okay and this deformation is very easily because this is a kind of uh, very clearly you can uh, notice this kind of deformation okay so before failure you will be able to see okay this particular structure is now there is a sag in the beam or whatever okay so there is some plastic deformation in that uh, and you can take some corrective measure before the if before any accident takes place okay so that is why having some kind of plastic deformation in the material is required though a mechanical engineer who, or design engineer is not going to use his material in that range okay he is going to use that material in the elastic range itself but it gives a, him confidence that if uh, because of any reason in the service if the load increases beyond beyond the design load the material is not going to uh, fracture it will show some plastic deformation and that can be easily noticed and it can be corrected just a comment on sometime we get confused between fracture and failure okay uh, to to kind of uh, have separate compartment for both these terms so failure can be defined differently depending upon application okay i can say failure can be defined uh, in a very broad sense okay and people can use failure uh, in different context for example a design engineer define failure as yielding okay because design engineer always uh, like to design his structure within the elastic limit in fact there also he takes lot of uh, factor of safety so much below the yield point uh, he will design such that the stress in the in the structure remains much below the yield point 
okay so if if because of any reason uh, the material deform plastically then for him the, the that is a failure of material it, it material should not have uh, yielded okay for a metallurgical engineer uh, on the other hand he can define the failure as necking okay so metallurgical engineer do lot of uh, uh, all the processes which we use in metallurgical engineering are in plastic deformation only through plastic deformation only for example if you want to do forging you will have to do plastic deformation change the shape if you want to do rolling you have to reduce the thickness of the sheet okay by rolling or you can do extrusion all these processes depend upon plastic deformation so for a metallurgical engineer uh, the material uh, is good if it is showing a lot of plastic deformation or lot of ductility because that is how uh, he processes the material so for him the failure is if suppose uh, uh, locally at some location uh, there is a non uniform deformation not exactly necking but non uniform deformation okay so for him that is a failure because the cross sectional area of the sheet or any any bar or something like that will reduce in that particular section so it is a failure so i can say fracture is a failure okay but failure of material not necessarily means fracture okay fracture is another type of failure and what happens in fracture that is what is shown here fracture is when material fragments into two part or multiple part also whereas failure is can be yielding can be necking can be fracture etc so a lot of different things can be failure but fracture is very clear that my material has to fragment okay it has to be in two parts or it can be in multi part parts also okay but there has to be some uh, discontinuity in the material in the form of that there have to be two separate parts so that is my fracture now on this type of tensile curves okay i can do this tensile test at room temperature okay i can do this tensile test at high temperature okay so when do you do at high temperature of course with some uh, different type of test we do that okay but in general what happen when you do at high temperature what is the effect of temperature is that strength decreases and ductility increases so this is the general uh, behavior you will see when we increase the temperature of course th there will be some other metallurgical process taking place when you are doing at high temperature these are precipitation can be there aging can be there okay all these things we have already seen or recrystallization can be there okay which may alter this behavior that may be strength and may not increase or decrease or whatever but in general strength decreases and ductility increases with increase in temperature and that is why all the metallurgical processes also we try to do at high temperature hot hot forming hot forging hot rolling and so on so basically why understanding effect of temperature is important uh, that is for material processing all, all the processes we do at uh, under hot condition uh, of course not always but at least in initial part when we want to impose large deformation all these processes are done under hot condition so i un should understand that what is the effect of temperature on the stress strain curve of a material another very important application of temperature on the uh, on the uh, stress strain curve of a material is creep strength okay for a high temperature application we need uh, creep strength of the material okay of course the way we do the test is slightly different than how we do in the tensile test but the important part here is that the temperature is the factor which is important to consider here the example where you will have this temperature effect is where we use material for gas or steam turbine or boiler material and so on wherever temperature is involved okay i need to know what is the uh, behavior of material as a function of temperature then there can be uh, change in the material behavior as a function of strain rate also okay and what is strain rate strain rate is strain per unit time okay and that will be dependent on the when i was discussing the tensile machine 
I said I can move the cross head with different velocity. So, if I am doing it at a high velocity, that means the I am having high strain per unit time, that means I am doing at high strain rate. If I am having a low velocity, then my strain per unit time will be small and my strain rate will be low. So, study of mechanical properties at high strain rate comes under impact loading. Okay. Again, the way we do the test can change, uh, uh, we will have other type of equipment than tensile test, but when we have high strain rate uh, type of deformation, then it is a, uh, it comes under impact kind of loading or impact kind of uh, deformation behavior. Important property to evaluate the impact toughness. So, basically we want to know that how much uh, energy is absorbed by the material okay, during the impact. For example, in as I told you in automobiles, uh, this is a very important property for a material to have that how much energy it is going to absorb during the impact because that is what is going to save the, the occupant of that particular car or automobile. Okay. If it absorbs more energy, then it will transmit less energy into the, into the cabin okay, and you will be saved. Nowadays, if you see some automobile advertisement, they actually tell you that they are using very high strength steels. Okay. So, to improve the crash worthiness of the material, so those uh, material will be ab able to absorb more energy during deformation. Impact toughness is basically energy absorbed by material before fracture during impact loading. Example material experiencing crash or armor materials also have to have good impact uh, toughness. Then there is a one another property which is not uh, actually comes under the tensile test, it is a very different property, but important one which we will see in detail later on. And that is basically to resistance to deformation by indentation or scratch. Okay. So, in this case we do not do the deformation of the whole material, we do a deformation of a very localized region by some indenter okay. uh, and there we look at the deformation locally. So, basically we actually measure local property here unlike bulk property obtained by tensile test, but it is a very important one to do a quick uh, uh, evaluation of properties of material. So, you do different treatment and you want to have a quick understanding of that how the strength is changing, okay. you can do hardness, the, then you can go for tensile test. And because ease of testing, you can, th this is a very important uh, uh, property to evaluate. Okay. So, this is what uh, we have to discuss today in the tensile test, thank you.